Welcome back to another episode of Big Talk, where we talk about big ideas, big goals, and big vision. I'm sitting down with the man, the myth, the legend, super blessed to be sitting down with the intelligent and the gifted Ron Baroga. What's up, Ron? What's going on, man? Ops <laughs> Financial, right? Yes, sir. Man, so I love, I love the logo, by the way. Thank you. Money, wealth, and mindset. Right. Financial and retirement strategies. Yes, sir. Yo, if you guys don't know, man, my man's a firebird. Financial, independent, relaxed, early bird. I'm talking about relaxing super early. A lot <laughs> early than, for sure, than me. Yeah, yeah. Can we share how early? Yes, yeah, so I retired at 47 years old in about nine months. Man, I think you know a little bit about retirement, right? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I ran the numbers and it worked out, so here I am. You ran the numbers and yeah. it worked out in your yeah. favor. Like, that's amazing. It's all about yeah. numbers. It's all about numbers. Got to know your numbers. Got to ask the questions. Because sometimes if you don't ask a question, like you don't get left out in the dark. Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So to the camera, to the audience, mm-hmm. tell them a little bit who you are. I mean, you've actually been a guest here before. This, we do it. I love him so much. I got to bring him for part two. <laughs> so, so, so for anyone that didn't watch the first episode, right? Who? What's Ops Financial, man? So Ops Financial, basically, it's um, Ops Financial. What I do is I teach the money, wealth mindset, okay. um, and, and it's really just financial retirement strategies built inside through life insurance. Um, it's not the only vehicle, but it's one vehicle that can get you to uh, to re- your retirement goals, right? So what I do is I, I, I just like to provide information, um, just provide information, maybe answer some questions people may have had. I could throw some stuff out there and maybe I've answered their questions. I'm all about just giving the, the information to them and whatever they get out of it, maybe it'll strike a conversation when you continue it forward. And all I, could, all I could do is run some numbers and say, hey, if this works for you, cool, let's, let's, let's go ahead and move forward with it. If it doesn't, then take some time to ask questions and pay yourself first i think people were doing it backwards and i never got this talk from any of the ogs and i found out a little too late i should have gone to the financial education space a little bit more read a little bit more books listen to some more people that that are doing it wealthy but i I found out too late and me as an educator uh because i do law enforcement training too i just have a passion for teaching you can listen to me you can what i what what i want to do is basically just give people more tools if I can, if you can walk away after talking to me with more tools, then I've done my job. I think that's kind of like my purpose. Um, so if I can just give you tools to to make better decisions, whether it's for your wealth, for your health, finances, faith, whatever, um, then cool. Then that's my purpose. That's all I want to do. So just give people more tools. So that's it. That's in a, in a nutshell. I just want to teach people, educate people, and if that strikes a conversation with them, hey, and, and that that's happened before. Uh, I've talked to people. I like throw stuff stuff out there. Hey, Ron, I want to talk to you about something. So, all right, cool. Let's have a conversation then. Nothing. I don't. I don't try to push people in a corner. I just say, this is information. These are your numbers. This is these are some of my thoughts. This is maybe how I would do it. But my way is not always the right way. It has to work for you. Everyone's different. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Everyone's different. But your way actually worked though. Yeah, it's working. And you know what? Uh, and I'm a I'm a big faith guy too. And there were times when I felt that I was in control of my, my own destiny, right? I'm like, you know what? That never worked. I was like, I, I know what's good for me. And when we're talking about family, we're talking about finances, uh, personal life, right? I th- figured I had all the answers. Like, I read all these books, I see all these videos, I think I know what I'm doing. But when I finally, when I hit some challenges and some rough spots in my life, I finally let go and I let God. Mm. So, and so- then, and if you do things, what I realize is when you do things with integrity and you do it for the right purpose, then I think you're doing you're, you're God's hands. You're doing his work. Hey, you're taking care, care of people. You're, you're educating people. Um, you're just looking out for people. And that's kind of what I want to do. That profession I'm in, uh, that I was in, you know, law enforcement, I just want to help my community, right? And now that I've learned the financial space, I go, I want to educate people on how that works too. So, like I said, my way is not always the, the only way, but it's a, it's a, a piece of the puzzle in mm-hmm. any financial por- portfolio so that's kind of where i'm at man well it's a good sweet <laughs> spot to be where you're at bro because yeah. your way worked and you actually did the numbers you ran right. you asked the right questions yeah. you looked into things you do your research you know like right like i mean like but rewind back to the beginning like okay. was it always been clear for you the whole entire time but at oh. one point where you're like i need to i need to figure this out like what how did that conspire the point where i was like okay well you know i'm getting close to retirement age right and then I realized, like, you know what? I didn't have all the answers. And, it, you know, and, and I figured out, you know what? It was a little too late. I wish I would have known a long time ago. So, so I figured out, I found out too late. And that's kind of where I feel that I, where I come. is like, you know what? 
I, when I was in the uh, law enforcement uh, agency, you know, I trained a lot of younger kids that are coming up. Like, okay, I was, I was there right where you were. Yeah. And so my, my whole goal was really, I just wanted to, to leave with giving them some information. Um, and whether it's, whether it's law enforcement training, whether it's about money, um, or even just mindset, because, um, oh my goodness. And a lot of the people, all the folks that I train, even, you know, I have contracts with uh, Stanislaus County. I see all the younger officers coming through and the mindset's a little different now. Really? The mindset's a little bit different. So, you know, that that's kind of just, you know, what, what I want to do is just really just train, educate, and just leave something behind. Arm them with the right tools right. to make the right decision, an right. informed decision right. that makes sense for them. Right. And I love that passion. I can tell you're very passionate about it because even though you're retired, bro, you work, no. I, I guarantee you, you, you work hard to make sure you get this message out there. <laughs> like you're on this mission to just, you know, <laughs> let people know. I'm telling you, why do I know? Because Ron and I, I see, I've seen your, your, your social media posts um, and uh, you're, uh, you're a student of the game. You're absorbing all the knowledge then you you know i want to say you're sharing it in a way where it's relatable where it's like okay that does kind of make sense right <laughs> i just want people to think yeah you know don't don't think that you know all the answers and then and you know learning about money is it's not hard right, right? it's all about picking up a book or watching it's like a stuff. lifelong um it is it, you never stop learning about money right how money works you know what i'm saying like, right like people wrote books all about this stuff for centuries but still i didn't learn about it until yeah Till later in life, man. Yeah. But you did it a lot earlier. But I learned that, um, uh, and and I was, uh, who was it? I don't remember who it was, but they say, oh, it was Kiyosaki. He says, don't just go go into anything blindly. Ask the questions. Like, why is it this way? What, right. wh why should I invest in this way? Ask the questions. I mean, some people, it doesn't have to be a hard topic to talk about. Like, but when you start learning it or getting the information from somebody, it's like, start digging a little deeper and ask the question. Yeah. Like, is this the right place to put my money? Or... Um, you know, even, you know, relating it to, to law enforcement, um, a lot of the way we used to do things is different back in the day. Really? And now with, with laws changing and officers with body cams now. Oh, my goodness. Um, a lot of them like to hold back on like, you know, yeah. saying some certain things or right. reacting a certain way. But if you fall back to what you were trained to do and you just and you, you do with with integrity and with ethics, I go, whatever your gut's telling you to do and you're doing it the right way. You go, you shouldn't worry about that camera that's on there. Right. You shouldn't worry about how you talk. Oh, wow. If you're, if you're coming with a, at, at a place of um, compassion and, right. and, and, and empathy. Yeah. You know, I don't want people. That's where I see our, our, where our law enforcement is going to, you know, there's problems there. It's like people hesitate now because right. now you got the community with their cameras out. We didn't have Everybody that back in the day. Camera. You on a camera right now? <laughs> <laughs> right? So people, they, they freeze up a little bit. Yeah. And I don't want that. Right. Um, but if you teach, you know, hey. Just go with what you were trained to do. And if you're paying attention in training, it shouldn't be a problem. You shouldn't be questioning. You shouldn't be hesitating. You should know what the, what's going to come out your mouth and what action you're going to. Oh, so. absolutely. Yeah. So it's, you say somewhat, it's, it's, it's the lack of practice that what you were trained to do right. can kind of like, you know, hinder you. But if you're trained correctly and you you perform, you know, right. in, in the way that you were trained, that um, yeah. You have more confidence. And that goes with anything, um, whether you're trained in the financial service industry, yeah. in healthcare industry, whatever. Like I said, you, you know your shit. If you know your shit, yeah. and, you know, it's going to be, you should be all right. It's going to be, you're going to be fine. <laughs> right. Right. But a lot of people don't know it. So, for example, um, I have two 20 year old daughters, and, you know, God, but I love them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was 21 years old, bro, I was spending next week's paycheck. Come on. As soon as I get paid, I'm spending it. I'm already spending next, I, I'm already using my future finances to pay for things already and this, right. this 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 economy and the way people are right now like people are there's, there's, there's this thing called um it's like buy now pay later program right. i don't know I'm trying to just pay later yeah. pay me later yeah. you know what i'm saying that's what it is after pay yes after pay <laughs> there's a lot of like a program like that right now right. oh here you want this phone exactly just pay me later pay exactly. me later and so you're already in debt and mm -hmm. it's conditioning people to to at a young age to yeah. just Pay later, pay later, but these, but that can really affect you in the long run because you never end up owning it, right? right? They just so, end up end up costing more for what costing you're asking, more, right? Costing more because you back in the in call, on college campuses, they always had these credit card companies out oh there. Oh my hey, goodness! Sign up for your first credit card, five hundred dollar right. limit. Man, back in the day, I was I was into the cars and the rice rockets and stuff. Yeah, yeah, me man, too. I was buying mufflers and speakers. Like, man, I'm, I'm working paycheck to paycheck, paying right. 
credit card bills and paying the minimum. Yes. I'm paying the minimum. Right. Right. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I'm as an adult and I still do that. You yeah. know, there's times where, and a lot of us, 97% of yeah. people out there right now are living paycheck right. to paycheck. Dude, 97%, That's I mean, a lot. nine out of 10 people. Right. Is living paycheck to paycheck, even though their lifestyle, you look like, oh, you're doing great. You got a big house, right. a nice big truck, right. but they're struggling financially. Yeah. We talk, You said you went to five guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> just talk, talk. Tell us about the experience with just five guys recently. So me and my wife, we got two burgers, two of those, they're small burgers and order fries and two waters. Came up to like 35 bucks for oh, two burgers. good, huh? Come on, I didn't think I was going to spend thirty dollars for some burgers. Wow. But that was is that like case. a special date or something? Or no, what? we just like, you know what? My she's like her coworkers like five guys in my face. Like, I haven't been to five guys in a minute. Let's go try it again. Oh, so we tried it, like, man, I'll pocket her a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it does. For thirty dollars so for some burgers? You know, I used to joke. I'm like, hey, you know what? Thank you so much for taking care of me today. I'm gonna treat you out to dinner. I'm gonna buy you McDonald's. <laughs> I used to joke. Right. But now it's like, no, when I'm buying you McDonald's, I'm spending some money. Yeah, exactly, yeah. If I'm buying you five guys, dude, I'm taking you to something fancy. <laughs> like five star. Five star. <laughs> five guys, crazy. five star. Yeah. It's crazy. But the cost of food, the cost of living. Yeah. And there's a lot of uncertainty right now. We just talked about like the, the feds raising rates. Right. Like, are they? Will they? Or what's That's what I heard. I heard that the feds are talking today, so I don't know uh, what going to come out of that are the rates going to go up again because we were mortgage rates back then i mean what eight percent was it was yeah up there? yeah it was I seen, high i said you'd seen eight percent before seven so, percent arms eight percent nine ten percent yeah but it looks like a lot of folks that that are trying to get a house right now they, they can't because they can't afford the yeah the down payment and stuff like that okay or, or so so that's going to be a challenge and you know I, I know a lot of folks that are trying to get their first homes but it's a challenge it is so that, a that, lot of people don't even think they, they're like i don't think i'll ever own a home they right. just they're, they're done like they just you know they just they'll think that they feel like they'll just rent forever now. Right. And but they shouldn't have that mindset because here's here's the other thing too. Okay. If if you're into wanting to get a house, right? right. I know a lot of realtors or uh, real estate agents. Sometimes you got to ask the question: like, Hey, are there loan programs out there for Ooh. me? Right. There are a lot, a lot of loan programs. There is. Guess. So there's 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 programs out there, but you can't just go by what the news is telling you that rates are going to go up. People can't afford. Well. There's special programs out there that they can help you with with loans and uh, you know the d down payment assistance, but you got to ask the questions. You can't act like you know everything. Right. So you got to talk to the people who are in the industry. And say, hey, I really want to buy a house, but I don't got the down payment for it. Well, those agents, that's their space, right? Yes. So ask the people that are in that space because they might know some people. Hey, I just right. saw something, yeah. but you know that that loan program that can help you with the down payment. Right. You got to ask the questions. You got to ask the right ask the right person the right, right question. Sometimes right. you know it's always like your brother-in-law or your sister or your best friend that's not in the industry. Right, right, right. They have no idea how financial of the financial world, how the real estate industry yeah, works, yeah. and they're giving you advice. You're like, wait a minute. Yeah, right. And, and you're taking that advice as as right. you know, as golden. Like you yeah. have to really talk to someone who's yeah. been there, done that, and especially for you being retired early, you can, you can have some probably get some good strategies. I do. So, you know, like I said, my, my, my strategy is not the only way. Um, like I said, it's built through life insurance and I didn't know life insurance has evolved. You know, back then we, we all thought that life insurance, age, well, the only one that's going to benefit is the beneficiaries. I'm, it's not going to benefit me because, yeah. you know, it's going to benefit. And that's a bad attitude to have though. You right. Know? Like, do you think it's only for them? Like, right. You know, it's not going to help anyone else. It's going to benefit me. And then right. they don't take action. Right. But the, but the problem with that is, is, hey, if you, if you have, I don't know if you own property, if you have a family, right? And the thing about life insurance, like everybody wants it, right? They yeah. know they need it. Yeah. They know they need it, but they don't understand it. I don't know how it works. Exactly. Well, life insurance has evolved since since well, maybe 20 years ago, right? Right. You don't have to die to use it. Yeah. But what what is it? Life insurance at the end of the day, what what is it? It's protecting, you know, what's important to you. Your you. Will my family be able to survive once I'm gone without my income? Mm. Right? Will I? Will Will they have? What's the next move if 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 they just all they have is a GoFundMe? Right? Right. Right. When I see that, I was like, okay, I feel I I, I feel sorry for the folks that have to go through GoFundMe because right. maybe they didn't plan. Yeah. You know? When did GoFundMe become? Me, when did know. GoFundMe become the actual life insurance plan? <laughs> no, I, I and I don't. Know. It, but what what, when, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? Because once the GoFundMe runs out, what's right. that? What is your spouse or whoever is your significant other? What's that next phone call going to be? I, I can't. We can't stay in this house, right? I mean, we gotta we gotta take our stuff and go somewhere else. Or, Ooh. 
So it's it's more about like what do you want your legacy to be when you're gone? Do you want your kids to continue the lifestyle that they had when you were here, whether they can still go to school, whether they can stay still be in the house they, they grew up with? Those are the things I I want people to to think about, but they don't think about those things like well you know I'm healthy now. And I go well if you try to get insurance later when you're when you're not healthy, you might not even be qualified or it's going to be costly. So it is. it's just, for me, it's just education. I just want people to understand right. that you don't have to die to use it. Um, that you can do different things with it. You can, you can actually use it as a retirement strategy. It's not, you know, the only strategy, but there's, you know, through uh, index, um, universal life or indexing, um, you don't lose any principal, right? Mm-hmm. So there's just different ways. And, and my thing is, I just want to get your information out there. And if it resonates with you and, yeah. and you think it's going to work for you, then cool. Share then. with me a story uh, of maybe someone, you know, one of your clients or someone you helped and recently, you know, how, how was their, um, you know, uh, with their, their experience like with life insurance? So the same thing. It's like they, they know how it works. And I, it's like, okay, well, just sit down with me and I'll explain to you how it, it's evolved and what you can do with it. Because I'm like you and I, and I put myself in their shoes like I was just like you. I didn't understand how it works, yeah. right? I know I need it, but I put it off. Um, but but then once they start to understand it, then they see that you're coming from a place of, oh, okay, he knows what he's talking about. And if you don't, then here's here's some information you can go ahead and educate yourself. Right. I'm just here to put something in, in front of you and explain it to you. And then when I finally show them some numbers, like this is actually what your numbers will look like. It's you know it's, it's not the exact numbers, but it's con- a conservative um, return. I go, this is what your retirement look like. And yeah. then while you have insurance. Yeah. I go, this, these are the other things you can do, do with it. If you're terminally ill, you can use 100% of your cash value in your policy to, mm-hmm. to, to use it. Um, critical illnesses, heart attack, strokes, those are the ones we see all the time, right? Yep. Especially my profession, heart attack, strokes, and cancer. Oh. You see that a lot in law enforcement, right? But what happens if if your disability check from work is not enough? Where, where are you going to come up with the cost? Well, through the life insurance that we sell, the living benefits, uh-huh. If we can confirm that you have those those certain ailments, heart attack, stroke, cancer, you can use you could tap into your life insurance. You don't have to die to use it. Right. So it's a vehicle where you know, like I said, medical costs it's expensive right now. So if you don't have if you don't have that you know backup money or reserve money in the bank, then you gotta have. What's your plan? Yeah, yeah I'm just insurance. I just want to create awareness. Right. Really, that's that's what it is. I don't care if you buy from me. I don't care. Go to go to whoever you who else is selling. I go, but if I can provide you some kind of information, then cool. Yeah. Then I feel like I'm doing something and I'm helping you out. I don't, I don't, I'm not pushing people in the corner. I'm just want to drop information. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Ron, I love that you come from a, a position of like serving, of actually giving them right. information and making sure that they, they have, you know, all the tools necessary. Yeah. And I love that. Um, it brings me up to, remind me of the story about, I want to say, it's a good friend of mine. And um, he's my age, mm-hmm. and I was trying to harp on him and tell him, "Hey, we should, you know, have a sit down and consider this." He's like, "Yeah, I'm so busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, right?" Right. And fortunately, one day, you know, this guy's he's, he's doing very, very well. You know, he drives, he does the gig economy. He drives mm-hmm. for DoorDash and okay. Uber, doing that, making good money. Um, and uh, he never really considered anything would ever happen to him because he's young. Right. So one day he woke up and his whole left side. Oh. And he's paralyzed. He yeah. had a stroke, right? Mm-hmm. And um, now he's in a wheelchair. And it hits me up and say, "Hey, dude, can I still, you know, move forward with, with that sit down?" I said, right. "Unfortunately, bro, I am. We can try, but you already have, you know, you have a stroke, you're in a right. wheelchair, right. and um, we didn't get to it soon before enough. soon right. enough, you know. And I was trying to tell you, explain this to you. You know, you have you're healthy now. Yeah, you never know." Right? right, he was complete like a week ago before that happened. Yeah, he was healthy. He was fine. We were talking to, yeah. like like you and I, mm-hmm. and then man, it's just crazy. And then I, I feel it makes me feel sad that now I can't help him. Right, right, right. And now he's he he was making eight thousand dollars a month. Wow, he's on a fixed income, making only eighteen hundred dollars a month. It's hard for him to get a job, and if he does make any more right. income, right. you're gonna cut his his his, his, right. his uh, disability insurance. Right. So now he has to move in and live with his mom. His mom is sixty plus years old, and she's having to like take him to from the doctor in a wheelchair. Yeah, it's supposed to be the other way around, right? Where the kids are supposed to take care of their right. their parents. And I was, I didn't want to like you know put salt on injury right, right. on his wound, but I'm like, bro, if you if you sat down with me, and, yeah. I, and we discussed this, and you had that stroke. You know, a percentage of your your yeah. life, this policy I was going to set up for you, you could use it right, right. now. 
Right. Right. So yeah. needs to say he have a um, a eleven year old son. That, unfortunately, you know um, he can't go to the baseball games and, and see him play. Yeah. Like that. It's hard for him to get there, and he needs someone to push him in the wheelchair to go watch his son play baseball. And your life just turns it's, upside down. It's, it's in a, crazy. In a second, you never I know. Say, yeah, I bring that story up because I feel like you know people think you're way too young mm -hmm. to anything happen to right. them. They think they're invincible. It's like why, you know. I have, you know, I, I, I want to share with you, you know, um, you know, when I realized how important it was, like, I, I actually, you know, I, I, I'm trying to buy as much as I can. Right. Because, and I know I'm people, that, I know people that, that are that way. It's like, Hey, I got, they got multiple policies. Yeah. And, yeah. I've got, I got, I've got a, um, cash value life insurance policy and I also have a term. Right. Right. Yeah. So just, just extra coverage. It's strategy. Exactly. Right. right. People think, Oh, already have it. Already yeah. have it through work. I already got enough. How do you okay. have enough money? <laughs> no. Can you have, can you, this guy won a billion dollars. This dude is, he hit a jackpot. He won a billion dollars. Is that enough money? Man, billion dollars these days? Probably not enough. Probably not enough. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. You know, but even though, <laughs> he, let's say he doesn't spend all that billion dollars. I never had anyone say, dude, I have way too much money. Right. How right. is that a problem? I don't know. If, if I had that much money, the first, now that I know what I know. Yeah. Reading books and everything like that, I would find, Ways to turn that money so it can get pregnant and make more money. Oh, he said get pregnant. <laughs> I want my money to get pregnant and make you more money. You want your money working for you. Right. Yeah. So find some some things or a business or uh, some kind of uh, financial strategy that's going to help your money just keep growing because that exactly. money is going to eventually. Is that the goal? Yeah, that's the goal. I mean, we can't take it with you. No. Might as well let it grow. Let it grow. And let other people let work. benefit from yeah. that, right? Yeah. Including generations and generations. Right. I mean, that, that's how it isn't that the goal like to just yeah. not not to not to be alive and consume and leave nothing behind yeah replace what you consume right for other people to enjoy you know how the Rock rockefellers did it have you heard about the rockefellers yes you know them, right? the rich 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 family right no, tell so me. the rockefellers what they did or at least so, the audience who don't know so, rockefellers so that family the rockefellers you guys you look it up they, they're a wealthy family um so what they did whenever a child was born they would put insurance oh on the on the child you could put on you could put on uh, insurance on the child, right? So basically, that's the agreement for the whole Rockefeller family. Right. But when the, when that person passes away, that money just goes into the bank, the, the Rockefeller bank. So they just, and that's how they, and they would, and how would they would purchase their investments, their businesses, is they would pull from their life insurance. Come on, they became their own bank. Come on. So that's how they did it. And that's, wow. have you heard of bank owned life insurance? Uh, bank owned life insurance. Please enlighten us. So bank, they call it bully, right? Yeah. So what that is is big banks that chase the Wells Fargo's, the Bank of America's, they purchase bank, uh, they pay, purchase life insurance on the the top dogs, the execs, but the beneficiary is the bank. So oh. when the when the execs pass away, that money just goes back into their portfolio. They use that to pay their employees. They use that to pay out you know the retirements. Like so, they're using that. Just, so wow. if the wealthy people are understanding where to put their money. Why can't we do it? We all have access to life insurance, right? Yeah. So if the wealthy do, do they do the wealthy need life insurance? Not really, because no. they they, they can self insure themselves. They they have money, right? So why do they buy it? They buy it because there's protection in it. They know how it passes off without uh, being taxed, and you can just cycle that money. It's just rinse and repeat. It's almost sound like a cheat code, bro. It is, but it's it's, it's all there in the IRS. Is it legal? It's legal. And is there is there a place on. is there a place to put uh, claim tax uh, any earnings from taxes on a, on a ten forty? No, no, there is because it's a life insurance, policy. right? So that's where but you do have to claim claim your capital gains and for your real estate investments, your right, your your uh, all those yeah, all the capital money gains. you make, capital gains, you got to well, claim that gains though. On the life Even insurance. money from illegal illegal stuff, you got to claim that too. I right. see. Like, you got to claim your gambling winnings from Sky. <laughs> yeah, you got them right. But life insurance is it's life insurance. There's tax codes in there that say that. Nothing. So that's tax codes. See, right. we all get the same tax codes, right? Right? right, and you, the, the famous thing when, when Trump said when Hillary accused Trump of not paying taxes, right, right? and then Trump's like, "What do you say?" So, it, I, I like that you bring that up. Yeah, but I can't be mad at the people that understand and read the tax codes. If they understand the tax code, yes. then I'm going to work my business to where it benefits me. I can't be mad at the wealthy people because they took the time to learn it. Yeah, so I can't be mad. It's thick though. It's thick. <laughs> but if you take the time to learn it, it's not how much money you make. No, they're right. It's how much you you keep. <laughs> what you keep, <laughs> so what and, you keep, and life insurance is a great vehicle, right? To 
keep and 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 also grow and pregnate right. your money to get, yeah. let it let it grow yeah for generation to use man this has been awesome i don't know how we led into life insurance but we um, we, we we i mean this is what we talk about guys right. if you're talking about money you have to start with the basics right. the foundation right right and then once you have the foundation set up like every like a house mm -hmm. right so when we talk about your financial house get yeah. the foundation and then you build upon that yeah. right and you get a little bit more you know you could do some more crazier right. investments and right. more you know volatility stuff um i know you kept your eye on, on on what's going on with the market right now yeah and uh, you see what's going on with nvidia chips you see what's going on with the stock market yeah. bitcoin and stuff like that yeah do you dabble a little bit in this no other? i haven't gotten into crypto yet okay not yet not yet not yet um, you can, know, you, I can just I ask have, you why because i haven't talked to the right person yet I and I, I know i know some folks that are in the crypto business Right. And I do need to have that conversation because I'm, you know, who knows? You know, would it be a, a good idea to diversify a little bit? Into yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Right. Um, because the way it is, um, money that's printed, that's that's fake money, right? Sure. Yeah, it is. Because it you go, be. you go to the bank, you deposit a thousand dollars, right? Or let's say, let's say you deposit ten thousand yeah. dollars into a bank. What is what's your return on the banks? What do they give you on the, your returns on the bank? Zero point zero one. Yeah. You barely get anything. Nothing. But what do they do with your money? They flip it, right? Yeah. Through loans, through credit cards, they charge you five percent. They charge with my you my money, right? See, so why, why, why are we doing all that? I get you need the banks to pay your bills, right? Right. I go, but where else can you put your money? You got to ask the questions. You got, you got to find places to put your money where it's going to grow. Ooh. Because that zero point zero one or three percent from the banks, that's not going to pay you anything. Yes, yeah, but yet absolutely. they're they're flipping your money to somebody else, and and. And then they send you a 1099 saying, hey, right. you made some <laughs> Exactly. <Yeah>. Because, <laughs> see? Like, hey, so, man, if we paid you 0.01% and also you owe us. You so know, I'm saying ask the questions. Ask, you got to ask, ask the questions. The questions you got to understand how money works. For those of you guys who want to know more about Ron, Ron where, where can they connect with you? How, how can they find out more about your strategies? And yeah. So like it would that? be opsfinancial.net. Um, law enforcement training would be opsolutionstraining.com. So those are my two uh, businesses. They can find me there. Um, but like I said, just, just reach out. Um, Ask the questions. I don't put you in a corner. We just I want to educate you and just give you some information, show you some numbers, and you just walk away with, with the numbers and either keep it uh, continue the conversation or we, we just let it go. No no hard feelings. Absolutely. No, no hard you feelings. guys take advantage <laughs> of an advantage. I mean the man I'm sitting here with in front of him for a reason, right? Um, and he's very punctual, he's very knowledgeable and expert in so many different areas. So if you guys want to, you know, get his attention, hit me up, hit Ron up, let's talk about it. Ron, any final thoughts before we cut out? No, I appreciate you giving me this platform to talk. It's good to just banter and just talk everything. Uh, I mean, like I said, there's so much going on right now, so much to talk about, so much to just draw awareness to people and carry those conversations on. Other than that, appreciate it, brother. The pleasure is all mine, brother. <laughs> Definitely, man. It's an honor to have my man, Ron Baroga, I was financial here in the building. Until then, you guys stay blessed, stay intelligent, stay gifted, keep doing it. B I G. Yes, sir.